Randy, it's Michael, Don, and Peter. How are you doing? I'm good, Michael. How are you doing? Everything good? I hope you're well. And same to you, Don and Peter. It's good to be with you guys. I hope you're safe and healthy. Same to you, Randy. Thank you, Randy. Um, Thanks, Randy. I, I, I've been saying this on the air a lot. You have long been a deal maker. Even before you were president of the Yankees, you know how to get deals done. So I turn to you and I say, Randy, is there a deal to be done here? Do you believe there's going to be a deal? I sure do, and I hope so. And I'll tell you why. I think we have to turn away from the contentious issues which have been driving this negotiation. You know, I talk to the commissioner almost every single day. I can tell you he is determined to play this year. He's dedicated to trying to get a season as soon as possible, and he's really, really working hard. I've talked to all of the teams, whether they be owners or team presidents, every team I've talked to, all 30, they want to play. The players want to play. And I believe, as I've said over and over again, you know, the players are the heart and soul of this game. That's, they're, they're what people come to watch. And we, we must respect them and we must honor them and move forward. The contentious issues in this negotiation have been about money, how much uh, will these players get paid, and how many games will we play. So we have an agreement uh, in uh, the famous, I believe, was March 26th agreement that laid out all of those uh, uh, terms. And it's not worth it at this point in time, you know, arguing back and forth what it meant, because what it does mean, and everybody is in agreement, is that the commissioner has the ability to set a schedule as long as he pays the players uh, 100% uh, pro rata. That means no matter how many games they get 100% of their salary. So everybody agrees with that. And, you know, the players have said that they want to play tell us when and where. But under, under the March agreement, you can't just do it that way. In the agreement, there's an obligation by both sides before you can set a schedule to negotiate things like health and safety protocols, what happens is if, if there is a, uh, a pause, meaning you know the virus spikes again, which players uh, can opt out, which couldn't, uh, which can't, and what happens to all of them. These are really, really important issues. So what has to happen here, in my opinion, as somebody who's been you know, negotiating labor agreements for 40 years uh, and somebody who, uh, who's negotiated side by side you know, with the commissioner, he knows what to do. He's a very, very good labor negotiator. You know, I know Tony Clark. He played for us, Michael. He's a mm -hmm. good man. You know, we, we, we have to stop, you know, disrespecting each other and communicating with each other. And I just, for the life of me now, you know, I asked the commissioner this today. I said, are you ready to get in the room and negotiate? Why haven't they done that, that, Randy? Well, that, that, you know, get in the room and negotiate. You know, Deputy Commissioner Dan Halem, I mean, there's nobody with a better disposition in the world than him. You know, Tony's a good guy. I don't know Bruce Meyer. But these are issues that are in the agreement that if baseball didn't negotiate with the players, they'd be subject to liability. Just like if the players didn't negotiate them with the owners, they'd be subject to liability. So at the end of the day, I'm urging everybody here, everybody put your masks on social distance go out to phoenix i'm sure tony clark has a nice backyard or come here anywhere i'll make yankee stadium available get in the room negotiate these protocols and get going i i for the life of me you know i was as you remember michael and you know i i was the chief negotiator after the strike yep i mean Don Fear and I lived together for days and, and months and weeks, and, and that's the way it has to be, and and that's what has to happen. This agreement is, is, is tough. These are very tough times we're living in, but... You know, we've done this before, the union and the, and, and, and the clubs, and we got to do it again. So I, if I was 
you guys or anybody in the media or all the fans, I would be asking one question to everybody now. Why aren't you in the room bargaining? I know the commission is ready to do it. Randy, as somebody that's negotiated contracts and understands the landscape, how frustrating is it that there could be an agreement in March between both sides, and yet both sides can look at that agreement so differently? Well, I think that it's it, the agreement, the way you know I've read it, is very simple. The agreement calls for a negotiation to, on player salaries uh, when three conditions aren't met, there's no fans in the, in the buildings. There are travel restrictions, and these health and safety protocols have not been agreed to. So there's a negotiation. It doesn't mean there has to be an agreement, but there has to be a negotiation. So I understand that you've negotiated. They haven't been able to reach an agreement, and there's a remedy in the agreement. That remedy says that if you can't reach an agreement, the commissioner has the ability to set the schedule, meaning how many games, as long as he can uh, it pays the players 100% pro rata. So we're past that. Now let's get to the important issues. And for the life of me, you know, we have a lot of smart people here uh, who, who get health and safety issues. Players should, you know, really be all over health and safety issues. I mean, Scott Boris has a lot, a lot of players uh, involved in this thing. And, you know, with all due respect, he's been really, really outspoken and had some good ideas on health and safety. He's done a lot of research. He should talk to the players' union, give him, his, give him the input. Forget talking about money. And, and get in a room and let's decide this because this is, these are the issues now that are holding us back. The talking money the, issue and the game issue, we're past that. We're talking to the president of the New York Yankees, and that's Randy Levine. Randy, you, you obviously understand branding. I know you're very protective uh, of the Yankee brand. It's important to, to the way people look at your product. Does it disappoint you? that all of this dirty laundry has been aired, Randy, and people are looking at baseball and going, this is not the time for this. I mean, the country's in, in, in a tough go of it right now. Why is baseball and the Players Association, why is this all being aired out in public? Why isn't it behind closed doors? Well, it should be behind closed doors. Uh, unfortunately, it is what it is. Uh, we're all to blame, including me. Everybody who's in the game needs to own this and take responsibility that we all could have done a better job and we all can do a better job. So what I'm urging now is let's do the better job. Let's, let's get in a room. And now, you know, I don't think there's a lot of space between us if we're negotiating the rest of these, these issues. Let, let's get in a room, men of good faith, women of good faith, get in, get in a room and, and, and finish these things up in the, in the March agreement. And, and let's play and start to build back our relationship moving forward, both for the public trust of the fans and, you know, players and clubs need to get along. Absolutely. We don't need this, this, you know, wall between us. Now you mentioned that, you know, all the players want to play, all the owners want to play, but are you sure that all the owners want to play, that there aren't some that look at this and say, I, I might actually lose less money if we just don't play? Is, there, is that a concern? No, as I said, Don, I mean, I've talked to all 30 clubs. I've talked to owners. I've talked to presidents. I haven't talked to all 30 uh, owners or 30 presidents. It's been a combination. Mm -hmm. I have not heard one club tell me, and that's all I can go by, uh, or tell Hal Steinbrenner that they don't want to play. And I've asked the commissioner, and he tells me all 30 clubs want to play. I think you need to take over the whole thing, Randy. You've done this before. Just take it over. Just get it done. No, they have, you you they, grab they, Tony Clark and do it. They have really they have people here who are really competent. I mean, Rob Manford and Dan Halem are superb negotiators, men of good faith. Tony Clark is a man of good faith. Uh, as I said, I've done a lot of... A lot of business with the Players Association through the years. I don't know the negotiator, Bruce Meyer. I've never met him. But at the end of the day, all right, now's the time. You know, forget it. We'll get the number of games. The commissioner will, will do that. Uh, the players will get the pro rata amount of money. Uh, let's get in room, bang out all these other issues, and, and that's it. I mean, with all due respect, 
I, I, you know, the Players Association should not be talking about grievances or litigation. They should be talking, getting in a room and negotiating uh, a deal. As I said, I'm not saying that to accuse anybody of fault. I just... As I said, for the, why isn't everybody in a room right now? But, and the, com- the commissioner has told me he's ready to do it. So just we got to get Tony to say yes. Come up with a venue, a lot of beautiful places to to do this. Let's do it. I, the frustrating thing for me, Randy, and, and listen, you you know far more than I do, is that there's been a missed opportunity here. You guys could have been back on July 4th, have the landscape to yourself for three weeks, and you're right, both sides are competent, otherwise they wouldn't have the jobs that they have, but you you shouldn't have to be begging for them to, to go into a room. and This should be a fait accompli did, here. There's, and, there's, a lot, there's a lot going on here. And did you guys have that thought when, when you thought you would be first? Did, like, did you guys, for example, the Yankees, think this was an opportunity for, for growth yes. of the game? 100%. I mean, these are unprecedented times. They're really unprecedented times. You know, we're dealing with the pandemic. We're dealing with uh, what's going on now, uh, recognition of, uh, of social justice and, uh, and, and people in this country taking a look at, you know, finally in a very strong way combating racism and prejudice and and striving all of us to be better these are very 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 different times and we all now it doesn't matter now what happened in the past guys we can't change it we can't change what happened yesterday what happened a week ago what happened two weeks ago all we can do is move forward and basically say let's get this deal done now i think it will help the country Country misses baseball. Baseball's had a, a great soothing effect uh, on 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 America and society. You know, Jackie Robinson. You and I were there together, Michael. When after 9/11, yep. uh, you know, when President Bush threw out the first pitch. I mean, it's time and time again. I mean, we can you know just be upset about what happened yesterday or last week or two weeks. As I said, we all own it. We all need to be better about it. But there's no excuse for me for just not getting in a room now and solving it. There there are plenty, plenty, you know, airplanes are flying. There are plenty of places to meet. And as I said, the commissioner has told me he's ready to go. So now we got to get, you know, Tony Clark and, and the Players Association and all the people talking to them, the executive board of the Players Association, they're really good, smart people, get in the room. I just, for the life of me, I've been negotiating forever. Uh, I know there's a pandemic. I know that, uh, you know, people were inside and couldn't go anywhere. But now with masks and social distancing and big rooms or out areas, there's enough places to meet for them to just go face-to-face and get this done. Because when you're face-to-face, it's a different thing than when you're on the telephone or when you're, you know, conducting yourself by uh, by technology. You know, you get – still, you look people in the eye, you get their reaction, and they're usually a lot more candid when you're, you know, in the same space. Hey, Randy, thanks for carving out some time for us and giving us some clarity on this. We really appreciate it. All right, guys. Stay safe. All the best. All right, Bye. You too. You too, Randy.